Hi, my name is Chelsea Borgman and I'm a program specialist on the education team at the Palmer Museum of Art. Thank you so much for joining us for our first installment of the Online Art Club. We are so excited to have you here and hope that you will follow along as we explore different artworks and themes found in Palmer's collection. In this video series, we will look at and discuss some of our favorite artworks at the Palmer, as well as introduce related art making projects that you can do at home. Subscribe to the Palmer's YouTube channel and keep an eye out for new online art club videos every other Friday. Before we get started, let's meet the online art club team and get to know the people who will be joining us each video to lead our exploration of the Palmer's collection. Hi, my name is Jules Edelman. I am a senior art education and fine arts major at Penn State and I am a program assistant and museum education intern for the Palmer. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm a senior art education major at Penn State and a program assistant intern at the Palmer Museum of Art. Hi, I'm Inga, a PhD student in art education at Penn State and a graduate assistant at the Palmers. We'll check in with them in a little bit, but first, let's take a look at this very special photograph by Vic Muniz. What do you see when you look at this picture? I see a woman in a long, puffy dress leaning against a pillar. What else do you notice? When I look closer, I see many different colors and textures. And if I squint my eyes, I can even see little shapes and figures. Let's zoom in closer and investigate. What do you see now? This picture is made up of lots and lots of toys arranged together. Do you recognize any of these toys? I see dominoes, toy horses, soldiers. Her eyelashes are made of little people. This picture is by the Brazilian artist Vic Muniz. And Muniz uses all kinds of unusual materials to make his photographs. Unlike artists who use paint or markers or pastels, Muniz uses things like tomato sauce, diamonds, and chocolate syrup to create images. To make an artwork like this, he would lay out all of the items on a big surface and then take a picture of his creation from above so that he could preserve it forever. Muniz looks at famous images of important people for inspiration from his artwork. Some of his pieces resemble classical paintings, while others, like this one, recreates a portrait of a celebrity. This picture is by a notable photographer named Nadar, and, his, and the woman in the picture is Sarah Bernhardt, who is a very famous stage actress in France in the 1800s. In this picture, Muniz put together a lot of small items of different sizes, colors, and shapes to make a bigger image. This is similar to artists who make mosaic images out of tile, glass, or other objects. Today, we're going to make our own mosaic artwork inspired by Vic Muniz. Can you think of any objects or materials in your house you could use to make a mosaic? Try to think of things that are small, inexpensive, or free, and that you can find a lot of at home. Here are some things you could try. Scraps of paper, scraps of fabric, beads, rocks, yarn and string, stickers, aquarium stones, toothpicks, dried beans, lentils, or uncooked pasta. Use your imagination. There are tons of simple items you can find to make your picture. You'll also need some paper or cardboard for the base, some glue, and maybe some scissors. But before you get started, think about the picture you want to create. You might want to find a picture in a magazine or the internet, or you could sketch your own picture. For my mosaic, I'm gonna use a bunch of different materials I have around my house. Some embroidery floss, some buttons, and some beads that I also had lying around. I started by getting some of this embroidery floss really sticky with glue, and I think I'm gonna use my dog Bowie as inspiration because he's elegant and beautiful just like Sarah Bernhardt. I decided to start by making the outline of him using the sticky string to just give myself a base to build off of and kind of see where my inspiration would take me. The string was a little tricky to work with. This is definitely a messy way to go about it, but it's also pretty fun. You can get some really cool shapes that you might not have come up with if you were just drawing. So I just used the string to kind of lead me where I was gonna go. Let's see what interesting shapes popped up when I stuck it down onto the paper. Then I started trying some different buttons to see what looked the most like my beautiful baby boy's eyes. <laughs> He's got uh, brown eyes and a big black nose. So I was just looking for the right buttons to fit in there. Then I took some beads and started placing them around to kind of create his fur and just add some texture to this very silly little portrait that I'm creating. I filled in his brown mustache with some 
brown and sort of reddish beads that I had. And I actually didn't really glue these down because I decided I wanted to use this. Um, I might want to use these beads in the future for another project. So I just have them mostly sitting there. Sometimes I put a tiny bit of glue on there just so that they didn't roll around. But I'm going to take a picture of this at the end anyways. So I wasn't super worried about them staying in place. Uh, then I decided to add some big bushy eyebrows on there because that's that's my guy. And again, just kind of deciding where it goes, what kind of looked right at the time. I thought the eyebrows made him look a little angry at first, so I moved them around and played with them until I thought that they looked like the right expression. Let's check in with my friends on the education team to see how they approached this prompt. Hi everyone, this is Jules. For my mosaic page, I decided that I wanted to use some cut paper in different colors. I just got some Colorade paper, which I'm really excited about. So I chose some colors of that and just decided to start cutting. I decided to represent a cowboy hat because I love cowboy hats and I have a pink one that I wear all of the time. It's kind of become my brand. My friends always make fun of me for wearing it so often, but I love it so much and I've been making a lot of art about it. So I decided that that's what I wanted my mosaic to be. So I just chose some colors that were in the orange and red and pink palette. And then I also chose some cooler colors to do for the bottom half of the hat. The top hat is more of those warmer colors and the bottom half is cooler colors. I had a really fun time kind of just cutting out these pieces randomly and seeing where they would fit and just playing with the paper. I don't do a lot of collage, so this was a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but I was really excited about the final result. And then after I did the whole cowboy hat, I decided to take some paper tiles that I had and make a background because I felt like it looks a little empty on the page with nothing in the back and I just wanted some more color to make it more fun because it is a rainbow cowboy hat. So I just took those squares and I cut out them little lines when they met the cowboy hat so they wouldn't um, just kind of overlap with that. And then I just chose random colors. I used some smaller ones and some bigger ones. And I filled up probably the first quarter of the page. And then after that, I decided I kind of wanted the squares to pixelate out a little bit. So I kind of started putting less ones at the bottom and just placing them in random places where I thought they would look good. Again, I thought a lot about color while I was doing this and just what colors would look good next to each other. So this is my final page. For our mosaic project, I decided to use yarn because I have a ton of it. So I cut a bunch of different colors into tiny little pieces and painted glue onto the paper into different shapes so that I could put the different colored yarns on top of the paper and I tried to make like a sunset over the ocean with clouds type of scene but I didn't have the right colors so it looks kind of funny but I still really like how it turned out. It was fun to make. For my mosaic, I'm going to use white and colored papers that glue rubber bands, beads, and fuzzy sticks. I will make the ice cream today. Do you like ice cream? First, I will draw the ice cream on the colored paper with a marker and then I will cut it off. Let's attach it to the white paper using glue. You can also wipe off the glue after attaching by tissue. Now I'll put the beads to the ice cream. I'll put some glue on the paper, but not much. And then choose the beads that you like. I chose beads based on three flavors, strawberry, blueberry, and orange vanilla. Put any beads that you like, and I will fill the ice cream with animal beads. You can also put some sprinkles on it. Now, I will decorate the ice cream cup with fuzzy sticks. I'm shaping them like a snail. Sometimes it may not stick well. Then, you can use the book to press and hold it. And I will fill the cup with rubber bands and animal beads. Choose whatever you want. And one last thing, I'll put the red fuzzy stick as spoons. Ta-da! It's all done. Ice cream, ice cream. Come and get it.
And I decided to fill in his eyebrows with some more beads. And this time I didn't care so much about the color. I decided that it might be interesting to have some different texture and colors in there. So I just randomly picked out beads from the bottom of my bead bin. Um, and then I found that long white bead that I thought might just work for his funny little teeth. Um, I had a little shell in there too that worked perfectly for his snaggle tooth that sticks out. Um, then I decided that I thought his eyebrows still made him look a little bit angry or something. So I got a little bit of gold wire that's a little bit difficult to see in this video, but it just, I placed it over the button eyes just to make them a little bit less big um, and put something over them that just made him look a little bit less, I don't know, angry or um, wild or something. Uh, then I realized that his ears definitely needed something, some texture on there, his big fluffy ears. So I got some more embroidery thread and I made some really quick little, um, tassels. It was really simple. I just uh, wound some embroidery thread around my fingers and then created creating loops and then I tied it at the end and cut off the loops at the other side. So it was just a really simple quick little uh, tassel. And here it is, the finished, the finished Bowie portrait. It's such a goofy little thing, but I actually think it turned out pretty cute. Um, a really fun way to experiment with materials and just see what you can come up with. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to see what you create. Make sure to take a picture of your finished project, just like Munez, and share it with us on Instagram or Facebook using the hashtag Palmer Online Art Club. We'll see you next time for another look at the Palmer's collection. Bye.